I have a note to the GOP. Your friends may come and go, but your enemies tend to accumulate. <laughs> so let's talk about that. And let's talk about fake Democrats that really are the GOP. Let's say, like, I just left the Board of Supervisors meeting, and one more moderate Democrat went to the dark side and voted to ban nudity, and that's Jane Kim. So we had se a 7-4 to four vote to ban nudity in San Francisco, and two ladies stripped their clothes off immediately, and six cops were right on them. And then, what, it was peculiar what happened. The press were just all over them with cameras. And I thought to myself, these people really like the nudity, you know? So maybe we should, don't, don't do this. So if may, I'd like to undo this law somehow. It's, we gotta, we gotta fight all this conservative flow because it, it, it really isn't governing to prohibit stuff, to privatize everything, to sell things out to people who shouldn't have been billionaires in the first place. I remember a day when there weren't any billionaires and life was much better. That's when we talk about the good old days when America was great, was when we taxed the rich. I mean, you're hearing about it, you're going to keep hearing about it, we're going to echo it all the time. I, I'm all over the place with what I like to talk about on this show. I like to talk about medical cannabis, mainly. I have a show on Wednesday, it's pre-recorded, it's of the community. I just take videos of the community and put them on the air to give them a voice because we're non-profit, we don't really get a lot of positive airtime because we're because we're nonprofit and so that's why I'm here I give it my all uh, just so I can get the word out because it's important that we have progressive voices in San Francisco we've got to keep San Francisco progressive and uh, it takes one person at a time so give me a call uh, I've got some things that I'm tweeting Let's go down the list of what's been on my mind. These scum vi villages in Amsterdam where they have people living in, oh dear, storage containers. If they, if they don't get along with their neighbors, they end up in a storage container. So it's not cute. That sort of thing right there. Here, let me scroll it up. They, they have you living in there. If they have a record of harassing their neighbors, maybe, you know, drinking a little too much or whatever they do. So that's just kind of what's going on there and uh, why Wiener's nudity is bad for everybody uh, his ban on nudity and Occupy Sandy was praised by Bloomberg but then he sent the police to shut them down so that's just hypocritical and it's kind of the same where the Occupy book the library hours were cut at the same time that the Occupy uh, library was thrown in the garbage can some some 7000 books so that's in that's kind of uh, a parallel hip, hip, that's kind of a hypocrisy there and the cannabis smokers actually it is protecting their lungs of course uh, that's all over the cannabis news and let's see i've got something i've got some pictures i took here of uh, It, it looks like the Justice Department really isn't saying much about the cannabis so far. Now here's something that's being imposed on us. See, this is, this is a parklet. And that's, that could cause an injury to sh people's shins. This was built by Audi, and they, uh, they're allowed to put that up there, but then it ex that parklet exists obstacle ob exists alongside laws prohibiting a p physical body from obstructing same types of spaces so yeah and uh, oh well here we go with this those lines in the sky I don't know if you've noticed we've been being sprayed and the spray there's there's planes flying all at this more or less the same altitudes and those, it's spraying so that uh, the sky, it does, it's not like the wind really affects it, the, the lines in the sky. Let me show you a picture here. Uh, that was a tweet I had. The they found barium and arsenic in those lines, so in the sky. I'm trying to get you a good picture. i got to scroll down a bit. Right. Let's 
so that would be kind of fun. Yeah, I took a picture of this. This is pretty. It was a it was a day that had very little wind, and we had these uh, planes just flying all day, and the sky just looked like a crossword puzzle, and the air smelled like aluminum. It made my lungs even hurt some, and I. I looked it up, well, it's barium, arsenic, uh, lead, selenium, there's, and those things are, of course, toxic. And, uh, well, anyway, I thought you, if you might want to talk about that, you could call me. I just want to put that out there. They've been saying that they're chemtrails, some people call them contrails, that they're just, oh, they're flying to and from the airport. Well, I used to think that, too, and I've lived here all my life. You know, and I used to, I used to think that those were were chemtrails, uh, not uh, contrails from airplanes, and it they were actually. But these are different. These uh, barium, if, if barium is it's for imaging, and I've I've been reading about barium imaging being used for weaponry, so that doesn't sound like it makes the flowers grow, does it? No, not at all. And then we've got this latest hypocrisy where, you know, we've got the four-year-old brain cancer patient who passed away uh, from the ma marijuana crackdown in Montana. That child had brain cancer and was cut off the cannabis and passed away, so. And now we've got the Medical Cannabis Task Force met the other day and it went, I took videos, you'll see next week, next Wednesday I'll put the videos on my other show. Uh, we discussed the future of the task force. It might take six more months to get it going again. Uh, as of now, it's been suspended after December 31st. And uh, that was my phone. I can So I, uh, somebody's ringing me on my phone. Call me on this number here. Call me on that number, please. All right, so I've got other things I've been talking about on Twitter. I get up really early in the morning and just start to, I don't sleep much at night. And you know how the GOP were going on and on about Benghazi, right? Well, they, have, they aren't talking about it now. Now it's back to the war on Christmas. <laughs> but the U.S. embassies were attacked in 2002, 2004, two, twice. 2006, 7, and 8, twice. 2012, once. And where were they then? <sighs> I rest my case. So, and Have you checked out the teapot party? Willie, Brand Willie uh, Nelson's teapot party. Oh, please. That was a terrible slip of the tongue. I apologize. Okay, and they're having a legal, uh, legitimate debate about legal marijuana. So we'll see what they're trending about that. It's responsible for a drop in youth crime. So there you go. And have you been affected by the war on drugs? Oh, of course I have. I've been in jail for, I spent six months in jail for an ounce of weed that didn't belong to me, so ask me about it. And I was only eight, I was still in high school, and I was 18 on my way home from school, and I stopped at a park, and boy, was that a mistake. So, there you go. You know, taking pictures of your medicine. All right, now let's see what the White House is saying. I want to see if the purges. Sometimes they'll purge the tweets for that, because they had some tweets, but I don't know if they're still up there. That's a good one. So anywho, we'll go back to this. Uh, I wanted to say that uh, spirituality is kindness, and we uh, if the t churches aren't going to do their part in being spiritual, they ought to be taxed. It's time. Time to tax them. And... The liberal class, we should always preserve the liberal class. The liberal class is the first to go when you have a fascist takeover of any society. 
the liberal class are the first ones to be limited, curtailed. They won't be allowed to assemble in public or sit down like they did in the Castro, and they took the benches out. And you, we're just seeing a lot, a lot of this prohibition of things and people, and privatization of of, th of uh, what should be the public domain. A good case in point is I can't turn on Channel Two in the morning because there's lot they just don't tell the truth. They're not telling me the truth, yet, you know, and uh, so. I have to uh, filter it so much that I just get the news online because uh, I, if I watch them, I'll yell at the ceiling and it scares my cat. So my cat, I don't want to scare the cat. Uh, so just with all these prohibitions of, you know, and here we've got prohibition of nudity, prohibition of sitting down, but we've, we're, we're dealing with, we live in a city with a lot of earthquakes and we're building these behemoth skyscrapers limiting the light when we were talking about having community gardens how, how are you going to have a garden with when you block all the light but we've got aged infrastructure that goes back to the 19th century back to the civil war period even sometimes and when are they going to fix they need that needs to be fixed and then talk about with, fix it with local labor and then talk about what we do with the rest of the property and let the public have more of an input here, here we've got these people just i feel like we've got a runaway government that just does whatever runs rampant on all the vacant space and just you know you know I feel like the public is being shut out too much and the public is what attracted the liberals is what attract the tourists to San Francisco it's not the conservatives the conservatives never attract tourists are you kidding me really I don't I know I don't see it I grew up in a GOP family and mm, love them but when it, Fox News got hold of them I just have to treat them with a lot of love and understanding that uh, they don't seem to get from that station. Oh dear. So they just, you know, they've got them all geared to think that they, if you don't collect shiny things, what your life means nothing. Well, it's kind of not like that. So they've got a, the GOP. They've really got to revamp their platform and to keep their credibility, and they know it. And, I don't know if you can fix stupid. There might I don't know what the, you got to do something with them. You know, they got, uh, it's just we're we're here to police them, not the other way around. They police us, the liberals, way too much. When it's the liberals who should be keeping them in check, and far too often we aren't, and we're not allowed. There's too many closed door policies going on, and got to work to change that too. So just make noise. That's all I can say. I'm making noise. Write letters. Um, there's a, a website called politifact.com. It's a fun website. I like it. Uh, so, and I talked about the parklets. So, uh, haven't gotten any calls yet, although I did get some on my cell phone. So, um, those fellows, you know, they, the na naked guys in the Castro, they really didn't bother me at all. They weren't, they weren't, uh, Unless they were uh, engaging in lewd behavior, which I never actually saw that myself. I just saw them walking around. I didn't. In fact, I I was taking a picture, and one was in my picture, and I didn't even notice him. That's how how I how much I just didn't even check it out. I didn't check him out at all. So they don't really. They're not. You can tell they're not packing heat. <laughs> they don't have. You can tell they're not. They don't have a gun. So what, you don't have to be afraid of that. Somebody's calling me on the wrong line, so anyway. Uh, I just wanted to say that before my phone rang, I don't know why. Oh, good. That, that, that's the way to call me. Hi, you're on the air with Denise Dory. SF uh, hi, Denise. Uh, your phone number is enlisted uh, on the, underneath you. It just says 000. Oh, uh, okay. Here, let's That's why you're not getting any calls, but you look great. Oh, yeah, it okay. says Dory 000. zero zero zero. So oh, no, I didn't no, have no. the number. I had to put on one of my old DVDs and get the number there to call you. I've been calling on your other phone. 
that was me on uh, making your other phone ring. Yeah, so I'll get I off that with some other people call in. Yeah, yeah well, uh, I wanted to mention phone. you should talk a little bit about what we heard yesterday from that woman up in Sonoma about what the uh, federales did to the uh, cannabis people, door to door, breaking down uh, doors and going in and dragging people out at six o'clock in the morning. It was a big raid up in Sonoma. I mean, the fed are, the feds are just crazy about cannabis. It was, uh, it's just it's just insane. It's, it's this war on drugs has got to stop. So anyway, I'll let you put your number up there and uh, let people call in and talk to you and vent a little about their liberal stuff. Okay, I'm going to get off the line now. Thanks, Frank. Sure. Yeah, it's going to be time to go soon anyway, but um, I had the, I didn't have the number up there, but I, I got to just you know, talk, do all the talking, that was one way to do it, you know, because I'm a woman and we like to talk, so, you know, I guess that was kind of my subconscious woman coming out, so anyway, yeah, I just, I'm just really upset about this nudity ban, I'm upset about Scott Weiner and Jane Kim and the rest, you know, I can understand, I know uh, Carmen Chu and them, I know she's going to, she votes no on everything, she wants to take away all, you know, anyway, I shouldn't keep going on about her, you know. We all know what's going on, and if you don't, you can look it up online. <laughs> that part, I'm not going to trash her. I mean, I might need her help with something sometimes, so I better just can it. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, so, yeah, give us a call, 861-6648. Number's right there, and we will we can talk about this nudity ban. I'm really really not feeling like it's the right, right direction for San Francisco. I don't think it... I don't think that... Uh, Naked people are really a threat to my safety or my health. And I've heard even progressive stations, like, well, I won't say who they are, but I've, I've heard progressive talk uh, shows talk about, yeah, well, it's okay to have this, this nudity ban. They like, they're, not, they're not against it. So, But I am, and I must be more progressive than they are. I have a good credit score, so does that make me conservative? <laughs> I doubt it. I probably have a better credit score than Newt Gingrich, you know, breakfast at Tiffany's. So, yeah, this is really good. Everybody's, uh, you know, was at the city hall, and uh, there were two girls being dragged out of there. I got pictures of them. On my, I'll show them on my show. They were yelling, and the whole, there was an uproar, so, but it was the final vote, so uh, I got to ask if there's a way to overturn that because it just doesn't it's not right and here we've got clear channel that dominates all of our our space with this I don't I mean it's not obscenity you know na nudity it's it's uh, obscene to some people though it's offensive that we don't have community billboards we just have this clear channel fear channel stuff you know they advertise for automobiles and just it's not community oriented, so I'm just not down with that either. And the parklets, you know, like I showed you a little earlier. So let's get back to this before I have to go. I wanted to get back to uh, Twitter. Yeah. We've got my tweets were mainly about cannabis this week, so I got, but I did have something about the parklets. I got a reply. There's the Cannabis Times. See, they, they say that you, we have lower rates of lung cancer, the cannabis people. So that's good. And, uh, and the decriminalization is helping with the crime rate. So that's good. According to the Huffington Post, that's a good source of news. Sometimes. I, mean, I don't agree with them all the time, especially about ASA and the industry of cannabis, you know, and cannabis being the industry, uh, you know, just limited to a few people rather than all, you know, all of us. I don't want gatekeepers of our cannabis. That just ain't, it's not, it's not uh, sustainable. It, it, who can pay those high prices? They're, I don't know, just... Call me, let's talk about it. We've got the federal grand jury. Yeah, so we've got, my hashtag is uh, Denise 
at Denise Dory on Twitter. So tweet me. I've got the. I'm watching to see if I get any tweets from you. And we've got tomorrow. We've got uh, the Axis of Love show at 10 p.m. It's going to be in uh, Jonathan Beaver Memorial. We lost an elder, Jonathan Beaver, who used to be. Uh, worked for the diggers. He was a volunteer for the diggers who used to give free food to the kids in the 60s who were ran away from home or even just people, you know, whoever needed food. It didn't have to be kids from kids from, that ran away, so it could be anybody who wanted food. And Jonathan was just a great activist for a lot of a lot of really good things, uh, human uh, social justice issues. I really admire him and he'll be sorely missed by the community. We also uh, have Frank's show is not going to be on Thursday. Uh, I guess he would have been the, the fourth week because uh, Christmas. So he'll be seen. Well, wait a minute. No, I think Frank has a show. Let's have a look. Frank's got a show. Yeah, he does. He's got a show on the 27th of December. De December the 13th and the 27th is for Frank at 5 o'clock, so that'll be good. Tune in, and he keeps my aura tuned up really, really nicely. And then our next uh, Axis show next time is going to cover the task force meeting that we had. And we're going to have another task force meeting by before December 31st when it sunsets. So... The task force will sunset. We had a little bit of bad press, but the patients went to the went to bat and really, uh, you know, told, educated uh, Chris Roberts at the SF Weekly that we were what was really going on. So I think he he got the message. So thanks for watching, and I'm really glad that you tuned in.